Okay, so today we are tackling another poem, turning it into a song. This is a poem from somebody who I've done work for before, and he has an amazing way of writing so visually. He gives me lots of great stuff to go off of. It's my favorite when I get work with words that just already have so much juice to them. It's really easy to get um, some stuff flowing. And this was one of those. I started with going through and just giving myself visual cues. Where were the rhymes? How was the set up? What did I want to use as a chorus? And actually, he had already set this up um, to have those breakdowns. He doesn't always. Sometimes he just sends me straight up poem and I kind of have to dissect what I want to use for verses, chorus, bridge, etc. And I give myself visual cues to see that. It just makes it so much easier for me to work on it. So I went through, I labeled where the rhyme couplets are. I sort of had to decide whether or not I liked how they worked and I labeled out the chorus and then I just kind of started working. Okay, so we start with, when you cast your net into a storm, you won't retrieve much of value, be warned. The subtleties of sunrise or sunset, better suited for those without regret. Simple wisdom, that's for sure. Experience has taught me, get past the obscure. The light of day or dark of night has the ability to inspire, providing insight. It's up to us to accept with faith, encounter life on life's terms without debate. I can't promise you a rainbow, but I can show you colors so bright they glow. There's some great stuff in there. Um, one of the things that I notice a lot with new songwriters and when you're taking poetry and turning it into a song there's this tendency to just throw a ton of words in when you don't need that many words. And it ends up getting really jumbled and difficult to say. And something that I look for a lot when I'm writing my own lyrics and when I'm working on other people's work is how does this feel in my mouth to say it? I don't know if you have this experience, but for me, when I come across a line and I'm like, this is just not either sitting comfortable in my mouth when I'm singing it, or there's word combinations that are really hard to spit out, or it just generally feels bad in my mouth when I'm saying it. I know that those are lines I have to change. So this was the original first verse, and I changed some lines, as you can obviously see here. So instead of, you won't retrieve much of value, be warned, I said, you won't get much back. This is your only warning. And I decided to rhyme that war, the beginning of warning, with storm. So when you cast your net into a storm, you won't get much back. This is your only warning. The subtleties of sunrise and sunset are better suited for those with no regret. The final, final version of that goes like this. When you cast... When you cast out into a storm, the empty net's the only warning that the sun's about to set. And that was the way I decided to take this idea of when you... Okay, so taking the very first stanza, the original first stanza that he wrote. When you cast your net into a storm, you won't retrieve much of value. Be warned. So casting your net into a storm is pointless. You want to cast your net out into calm sea, not into a storm. The subtleties of sunrise or sunset better suited for those without regret. And the entirety of this poem, I just felt like the point was in life, sometimes you're going to get sunrises. Sometimes you're going to get sunsets. You can't get too worked up about one or the other. Don't let your high get too high if you're in a sunrise season. And don't get your low too low if you're in a sunset season. Take everything for what it is and hold everything really loose. That's how you live life in peace. So that was how I went into this. And then I really just tried to sum up the lyrics as best I could. So maybe we'll just compare here. So that first stanza, you can see what it originally was, what I started tweaking it to be, and then what it ended up being. So 
I guess we can just go through like this. When you cast your net into a storm, you won't retrieve much of value, be warned. We changed that to you won't get much back. This is your only warning. And we ended up with the empty nets, the only warning. (laughs) The sun's about to set. Okay, so let's continue going through here. Simple wisdom, that's for sure. The extremes have pushed me past the obscure. The night is dark and the day is light and they both provide me with their own insights. That was how I started boiling it down. We ended up with simple wisdom, that's for sure. The extremes push me past the obscure, and now I find I'm in the light. That whole bit was just getting past the darkness. If you're in darkness, that extreme is going to push you past anything that you thought was fuzzy. Things become really clear when you're at the extreme of light or darkness. And then when you get past the obscurity, you find you're in the light. And so that was why I wrote it that way. Last stanza of the first verse, it's up to us to accept with faith and counter life on life's terms without debate. I can't promise you a rainbow, but I can show you colors so bright they glow. Um, I guess I didn't write in how I changed the lyrics there, but how it ended up being is if we can accept in faith each and every moment without debate, I can promise you a rainbow. Oh, often in shadow, but sometimes it glows. That was what I originally had in there. So it was like three stanzas in a verse And then there was this extra line, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then an extra, and it happened both times. But when I changed the chord progression in the second version of the song, we ended up needing to cut that last line, which ended up being perfect because when I sent this um, to the poet, he hated this line, holding too tight makes us vulnerable. He didn't like how the word vulnerable landed in that line. And that was kind of great because I ended up taking that line out anyways, so... Two birds, one stone. The chorus never changed. Um, Pretty much the first chorus that I came up with is the chorus we kept the whole time. I changed a little bit. The sun will rise, the sun will set. He had look to the sky, the stars all glow. I changed it to up in the sky, the stars all glow. And then we had three you will sees. You will see, you will see, you will see. I just added a little oh, oh. You will see, oh, you will see. Everything comes and goes. And then we did end up changing the title of the song, from sunrise or sunset to everything comes and goes. So I'm going to play you a decent chunk of the first version of this that we had so you can listen to it. First verse in the chorus. All right, so here we go. When you cast out into a storm, the empty net's the only warning that the sun's about to set. Okay, so I sent him that first version, and he very vehemently was like, it's too minor, it's too sad, that is not the vibe I was going for when I wrote this, I want this to be uplifting and hopeful, I want it to be faster, I want it to be happy, I want it to be, you know, um, inspire hope and positivity in people, and I was like, all right, I was, I was hesitant, I honestly was very hesitant to do that, I... I wanted the dichotomy of sunrise and sunset. I wanted some to be minor, some to be major. So I had the verses written in a minor key and the chorus written in a major key so that you kind of got both the sunrise and the sunset. He didn't want that. He very, very much was like, please try it in a major key a little bit faster and happier and see what you think. And I was like, okay, we'll try it out. When you cast out in Additionally, he has this line in here in the second verse about Fiddler on the Roof, and he wanted like a solo or a bridge that had that Jewish tone to it, which I have never played before. I had to go to Google and research what that mode is. Fun fact, it's the Phrygian dominant mode, and it has that very iconic But I couldn't figure out how to marry that mode with this key of C major in a way that like felt authentic and didn't kind of go, oh, like, all right, are, are we in C major or are we in this Phrygian dominant mode? So I played around with that a bunch 
And I think I landed on something that does feel sort of neat. I hinted at that mode in the first verse in the melody line, each and every moment without debate, I can promise you a rainbow. I kind of like came down in the melody on that very odd interval that has that reminiscent tone of um, that Phrygian dominant mode. And then when we got to the bridge, I kind of just went for it. I changed the way that I treated my vocals completely. It doesn't sound anything like any of the other song. Just to kind of bring you through into that like fiddler on the roof place and then back down into the chorus that you have heard and expect. And then I also made sure that we landed in the place of hope positivity, sunshine, sunrise. And so instead of landing on the A minor chord that I have been at the end of each verse, I just kind of flipped us up to the relative major, that C major chord, which has really been the tone we've been in through this whole song. Um, and I changed the words ever so slightly from everything comes and goes to let everything go. And we just kind of end on that and that was, I think, really what I wanted to hit. That was the whole point of the song, to just hold everything super loose. Hold it loose. Up in 